China is the second country to create and use autonomous rendezvous and docking for modular space station construction, following the Soviet Russian Mir space station and the Russian orbital component of the International Space Station. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will take a look at the biggest experiment China has ever performed. On July 24th, China launched a 23-ton research lab module to its newly built space station Tiangong. The Wenchen Lab, also also known as the Quest for the Heavens, is expected to conduct biological and life science research. The Tiangong Space Station, also known as the Heavenly Place, is China's new permanent space station. Previously, the country launched two brief trial space stations, Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2. Tiangong is a permanently crewed space station built by China and maintained by the China Man Space Agency in low Earth orbit between 340 and 450 kilometers above of the Earth's surface, China's first long-term space station, part of the Tiangong program, and the centerpiece of the China manned space program's third step. It has a pressurized volume of 320 M3, slightly more than one-third the size of the International Space Station. The construction of the next Tiangong space station was scheduled to take place between 2020 and 2022. According to a 2011 announcement, by 2013, it was anticipated that the space station's core module would launch in 2018. The first laboratory module would follow in 2020, and the second would launch in 2022. It was noted in 2018 that this is moved to 2020 slash 2023. Eleven launches were anticipated for the whole construction period, which would start in 2021 as of February 2020. It was revealed in 2021 that the China National Space Administration intended to finish building the space station in 2022. In contrast to the U.S. orbital segment of the IS, which needed manual spacewalking to connect cables, plumbing, and structural components. Tiangong modules are self-contained and pre-assembled. In November 2011, the unmanned spaceship Shenzhou-8 automatically docked with Tiangong-1. In June 2012, Shenzhou-9, the first crewed mission, arrived in Tiangong-1. The first crewed and uncrewed space dockings in China were Shenzhou-8 and 9, respectively. In June 2013, Shenzhou-10, the final crewed flight arrived in Tiangong-1. Tiangong-1 was observed by Chinese engineers until March 2016 when they cut off contact with the station. In April 2018, Tiangong-1 returned to Earth's atmosphere. In comparison to the International Space Station, ISS, Tiangong will be substantially smaller, with only three modules as opposed to the ISS's 16 modules. Tiangong will also be lighter than the International Space Station, ISS, which already has the Russian Nauka module added and is estimated to weigh 400 ton. The station's construction is based on the knowledge gathered from its predecessors, Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2. The Tianhe core module was launched on April 29, 2021, followed by many crewed and uncrewed missions and two additional laboratory cabin modules, Wenchun, quote, Quest for the Heavens, debuted on July 24th, 2022, while Meng Tian, quote, Dreaming of the Heavens, debuted on October 31st, 2022. The station's research aims to increase researchers' ability to conduct science experiments in space. The goal and mission of Tiangong, according to CMSA, the company that runs the space station, are to advance and gain experience in spacecraft rendezvous technology. Long duration autonomous spaceflight of the space station, regenerative life support technology, and independent cargo and fuel supply technology. Additionally, it will operate as a foundation for technologies for upcoming deep space exploration, the large-scale research and practical applications in orbit, and next-generation orbital vehicles. The CMSA supports private sector-led commercial initiatives and believes that their participation will result in innovative aeronautical technology technologies that are affordable. The space station is also taking into consideration space tourism. Tiangong is the object of China's aspirations. The station will be self-sufficient in terms of electricity, propulsion, life support, and living space. Additionally, it is made to refuel China's Zunqian Space Observatory, which will pass by the space station nearby. The Tianlian-2 family of data relay satellites offer real-time communications to the Tiangong space station including live audio and video connectivity, 
Three satellites were launched into geostationary orbits to support the station's communications and data needs. The Shenzhou spacecraft and earlier Tiangong prototypes both utilized the Chinese docking mechanism, which Tiangong is equipped with. The Russian APAS-8 technology provides the basis for the Chinese docking mechanism to educate, excite, and motivate the younger Chinese generation and the global audience in science and technology, the space station offers space lectures and accessible science activities. Each lecture is followed by a Q&A session where questions are submitted by students from classrooms throughout China. As a part of the Shenzhou 13 mission, the first and second Tiangong space lessons were conducted in December 2021 and March 2022, respectively. Shenzhou 14 marked the continuation of this custom. There have been conflicting statements on the Chinese system's compatibility with current and future docking systems on the ISS, which are likewise based on APAS, despite NASA labeling it as a clone of APAS. Its circular transfer route has an 800 millimeter diameter. The non-androgynous form weighs 200 kilograms, while the androgynous variant weighs 310 kilograms. The Shenzhou-8 and Tiangong-1 space stations served as the first platforms for the Chinese docking mechanism, which will also be used with upcoming CMSA cargo resupply vehicles and Chinese space station. Each module has solar power arrays that harness the sun's energy using gallium arsenide, photovoltaic cells to generate electricity. When the station moves into the Earth's shadow, energy is conserved to keep it running. The fuel for the station's propulsion engines will be replenished by resupplying spacecraft to maintain the station's position and atmospheric combat drag. The solar arrays have a 15-year design life. Iron thrusters and conventional chemical propulsion are both installed on the Tiangong space station to modify and maintain the station's orbit. The hull of the Tianhe core module is equipped with with four Hall Effect thrusters. In China, the advancement of Hall Effect thrusters is seen as a delicate subject, with researchers, quote, trying to advance the technology without drawing notice. To stop erosion and damage brought on by accelerated ion particles, Hall Effect thrusters were developed with the safety of manned missions in mind. To fend off harmful particles and preserve the thruster's integrity, a magnetic field and a ceramic shield were made. The Chinese Academy of Sciences said that the ion drive utilized on Tiangong operated continuously for 8,240 hours throughout the testing phase without experiencing any issues, demonstrating its fitness for Tiangong's intended 15-year lifespan. These are the first hull thrusters ever employed on a mission rated for human. Five robotic arms are present at the Tiangong station. The longest one is the 10-meter-long Chinarm ISS SSRMS robotic arm which is placed on the Tianhe core module and is Canadian style. A 16-foot-long SSRMS robotic arm that is five times more precise in placement than the China arm is found on the Wenchen module. The Wenchen arm is primarily utilized during astronaut EVAs to transport extravehicular experiments and other equipment outside the station. The China arm has a dual arm adapter installed that allows it to connect with the Wenchen robotic arm, enhancing its reach and weight-bearing capabilities. A payload release mechanism is fitted on the Mengxin module to help in cargo transfer. The robotic arm can place experiments onto the external adapters installed on the module exterior after retrieving them from the cargo airlock. Microsatellites can also be launched using it. To assist in moving the two laboratory modules during construction, two indexing robotic arms have been installed on top of their docking port. China expects Tiangong will take the role of the ISS, which is scheduled to be retired in 2031. That's all for today. Do you think the Tiangong space station could turn out better than ISS? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe to see more space-related content, and I'll see you in the next video.